We're going to put out an orchard, and again, they're also self uh, pollinating in the peaches. Now, one of the things that we do need to do with our trees is uh, pruning and training those, especially if you're going to get young trees. I have a great publication I send you, or you can go to Aggie Horticulture and look under fruits and nuts, and it'll put it there the home orchard. And it'll tell you exactly everything you need to know about establishing a peach tree, um, a peach orchard, or maybe plums and apricots. There's some certain things you need to look for when you go get those trees at the farm store or the garden center. And then you've got to plant them properly. You've got to uh, cut them off. That's the hardest thing for people to do, to cut them off and where you can start pruning those, those branches properly, okay? So I'll give you a great one. Uh, that because we're looking for maximum light penetration now on your other trees is like a year two three years old They've already started to grow. We prune them back because they we're, we're looking for new uh, Growth needs to full light and and also uh, the production of the product occurs on the outside of the perimeter of the tree So we want to open those trees up where we can help the disease control and also get plenty of light there and soil and other things are very important good drainage we don't want to plant them in a, in a free uh, frost zone. Uh, so there's some, so much stuff can uh, be done as far as putting your trees in and putting them in right. Uh, I'm going to not share. And one of the things, we cut them off to about six and a half to seven foot because, you know, that helps us in management. Uh, we need to kind of uh, move them up on the ground as far as our weed control. One other thing I want to share with you when we own peaches is that fertilization is very important. You know, they can be fertilized the first year after they leaf out in the spring. You need to put the fertilizer at a point slightly beyond the canopy's edge because those roots are going out. If you look at the canopy, the edge of the canopy of that tree, those feeder roots are right there and they're going to be going out further away. So you never put the, put your fertilizer up against the trunk or near the trunk of the tree. General recommended, or for, usually for water trees, include the following. The first year in April, we did need to put one cup of balanced fertilizer and a and a cup is equal to about a half a pound in may you can put another uh cup of about 2100 you can find these at the farm store june another cup and then july another cup a, a zero 2100 now the second year in march if they've already grown up and come out and started rooting out uh, branching out and budding you can put two cups in march two cups Again, we're staying at a uh, 2100, two cups in April, two cups in May, two cups in June, and two cups in July. Now, we talked about that balanced fertilizer. We're not talking about a balanced like triple 13. We recommend if you hadn't had a soil test, which is very important, if you're going to put that much money, go ahead and spend the $10 and $4 to get it down to A&M. Spend that uh, $10 to get that soil tested because you know if you need the lime, what kind of fertilizer you need to do and, and all the uh, information on the nutrients of your soil and you can call our office and I'll send you a soil test kit in, in the mail but we're talking about a 15 5 10 ratio of 3 1 2 and you can find this at the far, uh, farm stores in the garden centers that's a 15 5 10 and while we're on that remember we're talking about a certain amount that you're going to put out we're talking about a cup or about a half a pound of a, of a balanced fertilizer. So that's one of the things that you need to look for success. We have to plan ahead, not just fly by the seat of our plants, so to speak. I might use that terminology. But uh, let's have a plan and let's follow the plan. And make notes, we're always talking about keeping journals and things of this sort when uh, we're doing anything like that. And I've talked about that in our journal, make our plan uh, from year to year. Because if you've got problems, if you're like me, uh, you can't remember certain things that that uh, happens from year to year, especially if you don't have your notes. Now we're talking about that. Here's something else that's coming up pretty soon. We got to get ready for our spring vegetables. Matter of fact, with all the snow and the rain, uh, I mean, and the snow and the ice we've had, we need to not get too big a rush. But there's some things out there that we need to be ready. And one of the th most important parts of making a, a vegetable garden, we have three different things that we need to talk about. First of all is we have enough sunlight you know proper sunlight they need six to eight hours of full sun uh, most of your vegetables every day and i know some days we're talking about cloudy days but you know what you know what we're talking about there we don't need to be putting your garden in a shady area around your house check about where you're going to be doing 
Uh, if you've got trees growing up, next thing you know, in 10 years, your, your garden site's going to be shaded. Uh, the second and proper thing is to for good soil drainage, okay? Uh, good soil drainage, vegetables do not let, uh, they don't, do not like wet feet, so to speak. So you can hoe them up, heal them up. One of the things you can overcome your drainage is by doing uh, uh, containerized beds. You know, if you've got poor soil, you can uh, make some uh, containerized beds. That's so great because you can control uh, the moisture in there by irrigating. You can control the type of soil you put in there and you don't have to squat down all the time to uh, pick or harvest that vegetable. So think about that. Side selection is very important. Good sunlight, good drainage. And uh, okay, uh, this is a thing about another thing is the importance of, of having great soils. You know, if you have really clay sites, uh, a lot of times people have said, well, go put some sand on it. Well, that's just like making concrete or vice versa. If you have a sandy site, it's so sandy, you just can't stand it. You want to put a little bit of uh, clay soils in there. Well, that's what you're doing is you're making concrete. When it waters up, just those uh, sand particles are large. The clay particles are very small. And what happens, they just fill into the, into the spaces and there you have. It's just like having a hard pan in your garden. The best thing you can do is to put in organic matter, such as uh, compost material, leaves in the fall, uh, chop them up, spread them up, let them decay. That, break, that builds up that organic matter. It loosens up your soil and doing your compost, you just have some rich, very rich organic material. We always talk about the soil pH, why it's so important, because uh, pH is the acidity of the soil or the alkalinity. All our soils here in East Texas, with a few exceptions, are acidic so you need to know what you got to do to make those amendments of limestone and a lot of times we hear people putting out burnt lime well don't do that do an agricultural dolomitic lime and you can do that if you have a small amount so think about that uh, get ready for that uh, so we need a pH of about 6.5 that's ideal for our soils here in East Texas I had just looked at a soil test today this fella had a soil test of 6.0 and he was I said that's good if you want to add they were recommended to add about 10 pounds of a lime agricultural limestone to about a thousand square feet and uh, I said you can do that and incorporate it in it'll be great so get that soil test we will send you a kit in the mail he tells you how to take them send them to A&M now there's one of the things about it people are going to start going to send in their soil test in A&M uh, much more in uh, number wise and it might take a little longer but that's some important things now uh, the important things to look for in vegetable varieties and again uh, use the variety selectors if I can give you if you want to call uh, call me uh, we've got some great publications use that variety selectors for our area you know so uh, think about that you know if we don't start out right chances are we're not going to end up right so you're going to have some situations uh, that you know, some varieties are more resistant to, to disease. Some of them mature early, some of them mature later. Uh, think about that, and uh, uh, we, I think you'll have a successful gardening. Planting dates are very important. Uh, know the right planting dates for each crop. You know, if you're going out there and setting out tomatoes the first of March, uh, I'll just say chances are that that ground temperature is not above 60 degrees, so they're just going to sit there. They're going to kind of stagnate. In other words, they're just going to kind of go into dormancy in a way. So, uh, tomatoes, peppers, and things like this, they are short. They are uh, warm season crops. So, don't go and jump the gun unless you're going to be prepared to pay the consequences. Now, you can do some uh, things that we can, we can share with you that will help you to uh, keep the ground soil, uh, 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 soil temperature at a higher, we're talking about uh, raised beds with covers and things of this sort. So uh, give me a call. We're at the office, 903-756-5391. Come by and see us. Remember, I told you it would probably be another week before before they get us ready to go in our front door. So give us a call. Let us know, uh, and we'll try to let you in the back door. Okay? There's no way we can keep the back door open because it's a self-locking emergency uh, escape. So give us a call. Come by and see us, and hope you will see you. I've got a couple of minutes I want to share with the snow we had this week. It reminded me of a couple of scriptures that uh, that uh, uh, came to mind. Uh, Psalms 51, David. We know the story of David, and we're talking about people who are uh, accepted Christ as their Lord and Savior, and they've kind of fell amongst the thorns. 
In, chapter, in verse 7, it says, Wash me with hyssop, and I will be clean. Wash me, and I will be whiter than snow. And we drop on down to verse 12, and David says, Restore unto me the joy of your salvation, and grant me a willing spirit, and sustain me. I think a lot of times Christians today have lost the joy of their salvation. You, you know, and I, I taught Sunday school this past week in my church, and they was doing some research, you know, that a lot of times people that are non-Christians, you can't even tell the Christians from the non-Christians because they have the same lifestyles. And that's just not right, you know. We need to, to try to do the best. That's not saying we're perfect. That's not saying that we're sinless. We're sinners saved by grace, but we got to do the right thing. And we look also, uh, our God in heaven, it says in Isaiah 1, 6, 18, it says, he says, Come and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be like wool. And last week when we had our snow fried, that was a beautiful snow. We didn't have a lot of ice, a lot of sleet. It was just a fine packed snow. And it looked like perfect snow. You know, my secretary said they had some snow ice cream. I guess we should have too, but I didn't think about that. But it was beautiful. And that's what the Lord says when we will, He will forgive our sins and He will make our sins like they were crimson. They should be white as snow. I hope you know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. If you don't today, I can tell you the pathway how to get there. Look in Romans 10, chapter 10, verses 9, 10, and 13. We've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. We've, you know, and the wages of sin is death, but the the gift of God is eternal life. But that's the way to have a very personal relationship with Jesus Christ. It's not about membership. It's not about being good. It's about knowing Him as our Lord and Savior. Have a great week. Be careful out there. Looking for.